Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stay with me. Shalawama. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Great Awakening and the indwelling of the Elijah Spirit. Okay. We're going to be talking about how we can recognize that we're in this new era. We're going to be talking about what it is that we need to do to ensure that we are a part of it. We're even going to get into why the rest of the world is and will be rejecting this new time and these experiences. They don't want to have anything to do with it. Yep, and we're going to talk about why that is. Now, this lesson primarily will come out of the Third Testament of the Bible, but we'll be looking over in the Old Testament and, and maybe a verse or two out of the New Testament as well. You can find links to this book down in the description of this video, both an audio and a PDF that you can download and even a link to where you could actually purchase a copy for yourself. But the first verses that we're going to be looking at is coming out of chapter one down in about verse 51 talking about this new era okay few are the men who know the signs that a new era has begun and that i am manifesting myself spiritually to humanity one of the things about this third testament of the bible is that we recognize that it's written in first person mm -hmm. so when he says manifesting myself this is our father talking about how he is going to manifest himself to us right this shouldn't come to a surprise to anybody from what we read over in the book of John in chapter 4, where the Messiah is talking to the woman by the well. Mm -hmm. Read a little bit of this. Eh? You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is for the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. While the Father seeks such to worship him. And so now we're talking about this period here that the Messiah was prophesying about. Mm -hmm. This period where we would worship our Father in spirit. Mm -hmm. Read verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Letting us know that our Father himself is a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. But notice that word must there. That we must worship him in spirit and truth. No other choice. So that's what we're reading about over here in the third testament of the Bible. Where he says he's manifesting himself spiritually to humanity. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go on. The majority dedicate their lives and efforts to material progress. And in that death. And sometimes bloody struggle to reach their objective they walk like the blind and lose their course not knowing what they are after they do not see the light of the coming dawn do not see the signs and are very far from having knowledge of my revelation so like the lady at the well these people are blinded mm -hmm. neither can they hear even at war with one another making it so that they don't recognize that our father is here in spirit and in truth. Right. Let's read a little more of this because it tells us a little bit about why. This humanity has believed more in the doctrines and the words of man than in the revelations that I have given you throughout time. So in other words, what they're saying is we rather listen to people instead of reading the scripture. Right. Because like John told us, he's coming in spirit and truth. But there's a lot of people, some of them claim to be ministers that will tell us differently. Mm -hmm. Even have us thinking that there's going to be a material manifestation or that there's going to be another human that's actually going to come to be our Messiah in these end times. Yeah, so therefore we'll, we will bypass the spiritual manifestation and be on the lookout for a material manifestation. Right, absolutely. But... Because we are more willing to believe the doctrines of men. But we're going to get into that a little bit later on in this video. By chance, are you waiting for the Father? And His justice will send you greater signs than those which you behold at every turn. In order that you may feel and believe that this is the foretold time of my manifestation as the Spirit of Truth. Just like John said, but what he's saying here, he's saying, are you still waiting for him? Mm -hmm. Well, if you are still waiting for him, he's going to send you signs so that you can recognize that he is already here. Well, that's a problem 
Mm-hmm. Because those are not going to be all pleasant signs. Not mm-hmm. all of those signs are going to be good. A lot of what he's talking about here is going to be the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. That's sad because while there's others who already recognize his presence in the spirit, the majority of the world is not going to recognize that he's back and returned until they see the fulfillments of the trumpets being blown and the vows being poured out. Right. O oh, men of little faith, now disciples, you understand why I sometimes say to you that my voice cries in the wilderness, for there is no one who hears and truly listens. And this wilderness would be from our consciousness or from our intuition or from our dreams, from where he speaks to us from. Mm -hmm. But we just don't recognize his voice. Right, because we are told that there are things that you have to do in order to be able to to hear his voice through your conscience. You just don't um, automatically hear it and recognize that it's the father. In other words, we're going to have to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, that brings me to my next point, which will come out of chapter 2 of the Third Testament of the Bible. Down here in verse 42, where it starts talking about the Elijah spirit. Mm -hmm. Elijah, a spirit of great power who has not been recognized by humanity, has always been my forerunner. Today, he has come once again to prepare the chosen those who have served me as spokesmen and to all humanity. Talking about the Elijah spirit and the prophecy that he will indwell with us here in these end times. Mm -hmm. This book goes into great detail, clarifying what we learned in the Old Testament and the New Testament, how there are actually three Elijahs, including Moses, our Christ, who was the word made flesh, and Elijah here in this third era. This Elijah is also recognized as the comforter promised by John in chapter 14 as well. Matter of fact, would you start there at verse 15? If you love me, keep my commandments. Now this is important. We're actually going to see this again when we get over into the book of Malachi and how it is that we ensure that we have this Elijah spirit with us. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This is who we recognize as the Elijah spirit. Right. This is the Messiah speaking to his disciples. Telling us about this new era that we're actually in now. Mm -hmm. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, a lot of, um, well, the teachings that I received when I was um, going to church is that this comforter was the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, it's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit of Elijah is the Holy Spirit that is now dwelling with us and has been since about 1866. Mm, Okay. And it reaffirms this in the Third Testament as it's saying that he the Elijah Spirit or the Comforter or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call him, is this forerunner preparing us for what we have to come. Right. But look at verse 43. If you prepare yourselves and study my teachings in order to come to know my will, Elijah will come as your support and friend. Now, this is very important. Like I always says, the word if is probably the most important word in the Bible. Because it's actually telling us what we have to do. If we want this Elijah spirit to come dwell with us and be our support and our friend, it's saying that we're going to have to both prepare ourselves and study his teachings. Mm -hmm. Now, by teachings, he means the third testament of the Bible Mm -hmm. or the book of true life from which this book is derived. These are the teachings that started coming down after the Elijah spirit came to dwell with us in 1866. These teachings started coming down in 1884, which fulfilled the 2300 day prophecy spoken of by Daniel. So what does it mean to prepare ourselves? Right. One of the main ways we prepare ourselves is with this third testament of the Bible. We see it in the great book of true life. In teaching 290, 
down in about verse 49. If you would, would you read that? My kingdom is near you. That is why I am giving you these teachings in order to prepare you. I have also sent the spirit of Elijah to unite you and to purify you. So one of the main things that we do in order to prepare ourselves is studying these teachings. Mm -hmm. Because of so much that we learn in these scriptures, for instance, how to pray, right. how to speak spirit to spirit or how to communicate with our father. Mm -hmm. An emphasis that is put on giving charity. Absolutely. And what marriage does for us and the importance of loving our brother and such. It also brings to realization the conscious and how important that is for us to have a relationship with our conscious moving forward into this new era. To actually listen to our conscious mm -hmm. and not do things to actually shut it down. Right. We're going to get into a little bit on that as well. But another thing that we do in order to prepare ourselves is keeping the commandments. Right. Like we saw over there in John chapter 14 and verse 15. We also see this reinforced back in Malachi chapter 4 as it's also talking about the Elijah spirit there in verse 5. Of course, this is the last book in the Old Testament, even the last chapter in the Old Testament, even the last few verses, which to me signifies its importance. It kind of sums up the entire Old Testament. But if you would go ahead and read verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Now, like we talked about in another video, we used a different translation that substituted the word law for instructions. Mm -hmm. These are the instructions that was given to us. And in verse five, we see the result of keeping or following these instructions. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So that's what these laws do for us. These instructions teach us how to live so that the Elijah spirit will come and dwell with us. In other words, the Elijah spirit doesn't dwell with just any and everybody. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be in an unclean vessel, one would say. So this is the reason for the preparation. Absolutely. We have to clean ourselves up mm -hmm. and make ourselves ready for him to come and dwell with us. Right. He's just not going to come in a house full of filth and junk. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's jump over to the epistle of Barnabas that gives us another way that we have to prepare ourselves as it's talking about the temple here. Okay. Start right there where it says learn. Learn then how it shall be built in the name of the Lord. This is talking about the third temple. They had been inquiring about the third temple and how it would be constructed in the previous sentences or previous verses here. We were told that it would not be constructed like the old temples out of brick and mortar. And so now the disciples, maybe even Barnabas, is asking how will the new temple be constructed then how will we have a new temple if it's not going to be made of stone and mortar so that's what he's telling us to learn before we believe in god the habitations of our heart was corrupt and weak as being indeed like a temple made with hands in other words it was filthy mm -hmm. and messed up and not a habitable environment for something as clean as our father to come dwell in. Mm -hmm. Just like that temple back in the day would have had dust and dirt all in it. Our fleshly temple now, you can imagine, is way more unclean than that. Especially when we don't follow the rules or the instructions or the commandments. We are dirty. We are unclean. Yeah, this reminds me of um, way back when, when we actually used to have visitors to come by we would uh, know that they were coming by to visit us to stay in our home. We would actually start several weeks before then to start preparing for them. We would fix all the things that were wrong, um, get new linens, just do a whole lot of stuff to make them feel comfortable in order to receive them. We would actually do a spring cleaning, a house cleaning, getting our house ready to receive our guests. You're talking about when my parents would come to visit? Mm-hmm. 
Well, you could imagine here our father or the comforter or the Elijah spirit coming to visit with us. Mm -hmm. How much deep cleaning we actually want to do now. Yeah. Well, that's where the instructions come in. That's where the commandments come in. That's where that mm -hmm. preparation comes in. Yeah, because you don't want to receive guests in a home that has things wrong with it. And that's just like with the father. The Elijah spirit is not going to um, and dwell in a place that's nasty and um, filthy. And that also reminds me of going back to the book of Hermas, where we are told um, by the shepherd that the virtues will not dwell in a place that is filthy. They will leave that place. Yeah, and that's another preparation mm -hmm. that we need to be doing. The shepherd of Hermas has a good point. Mm -hmm. As we exterminate those wicked women, those wicked powers or demons, as some would call them, those evil spirits out of our life, like hatred and selfishness and no self-control, anger, impatience, mm -hmm. all of those that's talked about in the Shepherd of Hermes. And we bring in the Holy Spirits like cheerfulness and mm -hmm. faith and loving kindness right. and charity and you know, Coach, um, a few minutes ago, you was, you said how we would rather listen to man rather than to read scripture ourselves. Um, you know, man tells us that we don't have to prepare ourselves, mm -hmm. that we are fine the way that we are. And now by taking that teaching on, believing what man has told us, um, we don't clean our vessels and now it's hard for us or we can't even receive the spirit of Elijah. Yeah, we're going to get into some more verses on that, too. But let's finish up with this one right here. OK, for it was full of idolatry and was a habitation of demons throughout doing such things as were opposed to the will of God. So idolatry that goes to the second commandment, mm -hmm. you know, people so willing to take selfies and stuff now or turn a camera on their self and ignore the second commandment. Well, that helps create separation mm -hmm. from our father. That makes our vessels dirty, mm -hmm. unclean. And that's why a lot of these people, like you was talking about, that tell us that we don't have to obey the commandments and we don't have to do what the Bible says, also never talk about the comforting spirit or inheriting the earth or the third temple being a spiritual environment or any of that. They actually just focus on us being supernaturally removed off of the planet, mm -hmm. even though the scripture says that the righteous will never be removed. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. But it shall be built, observe ye in the name of the Lord, in order that the temple of the Lord may be built in glory. Talking about the third temple. How? Learn as follows. Having received the forgiveness of sins and placed our trust in the name of the Lord, we have become new creatures, formed again from the beginning. So here's the key to what we want to learn here is right there where it says, having received the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. This is how we make our environment ready for the spirit of Elijah to come and dwell with us. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do. This is one of the main things that we have to do to prepare ourselves. This may even be it. I ask you guys to help out in the comment section, especially those who are familiar with these teachings on what you believe it means when it's talking about preparing. We've discussed a few things here, but this may be the most important thing as far as the preparation is to receive the forgiveness of our sins. Repentance. Repentance. Remission. Canceling out of our sins. Mm -hmm. And of course, sin, by definition, according to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, is the transgression of the law. Right. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read that? Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So while they're telling us or trying to tell us that we don't have to obey the law, they're actually telling us to live a life of sin. Mm -hmm. Because like we see here, sin is, which means that's the definition of the word. Mm -hmm. Sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. So if we are disobeying the laws or the instructions or the commandments, 
we are actually living in sin and by doing so we are actually prohibiting our vessels our bodies from becoming his temple in other words by breaking the laws we are ensuring that our bodies are actually too dirty for us to have the indwelling of the Elijah spirit right and that goes back to what it was saying about how we prefer to listen to the doctrine of man instead of relying on the word because of course the word tells us that we have to reject sin that we have to clean ourselves up that we have to prepare ourselves if we want the indwelling of the discomforting spirit mm -hmm. but let's read a little bit more of this wherefore in our habitation God truly dwells in us. So once we've cleaned ourselves up, once we've gotten away from sin, then we can start to have the indwelling of our father. Then that's when the spirit of our father or the spirit of Elijah can come and dwell with us. Mm -hmm. How? His word of faith, his calling of promise, the wisdom of the statutes, the commands of the doctrine, he himself prophesying in us, he himself dwelling in us, opening to us who were enslaved by death, the doors of the temple, that is the mouth. And by giving us repentance, introduces us into incorruptible temple. So this is how our temple is built. This is how we make our bodies a temple so that our father can come and dwell in that temple. Mm -hmm. And in the New Testament, we learn that there are actually two ways to get the remission of sins. Of course, we want to live holy, especially now that we understand this. We want to live a life according to the laws or those instructions, I should call them. But what do we do about the laws that we have broken already? Right. Are we forever guilty of those laws? Well, we can actually receive forgiveness of those sins or remission of the sins that we have previously committed two ways, according to the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28, it's actually talking about the covenant or the Passover celebration that our Messiah instituted back there during the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, would you read that verse? For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's talking about that wine there. So that is communion. So every year we are able to partake in that communion with our father. That's what that festival is all about. That's what Passover is all about is to give us the remission of our sins is to actually forgive us for the rules that we have broken throughout the year. Things that we have done wrong inadvertently, mistakes that we have made. We can actually get forgiveness. We can actually get a clean slate mm -hmm. every year during Passover. Yeah, this is all in preparing ourselves. So if you get caught up in the whole Easter thing, it will be hard for you to um, get that remission of sins. And therefore, remembering this is about preparing to receive the Elijah spirit. Therefore, you will not be able to receive the Elijah spirit. It's kind of like they're trying to trick us mm -hmm. by making us keep Easter and worship a different God, not partaking in Passover. It's the same as that individual that's telling us that we don't have to obey the law. Mm -hmm. They are making sure that our environment is unclean and unworthy to have our father with us in order to have us enslaved to them. That's what the epistle of Barnabas that was talking about was that we're enslaved. Right. Well, as long as our environments are dirty, we are slaves to man. So that's kind of what he's doing, is keeping our focus away from our father so that we can be dependent on him for our food, clothing, and shelter. Okay, so what's the second way in order to get remissions for our sins? Well, we should have actually talked about it first, maybe, because it's talking about baptism, like we see there in Mark chapter 1 and verse 4. Okay. Would you read that? John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. So that's the other way we get forgiveness of the sins that we have committed. That's how we get our clean slate is through baptism. Mm -hmm. So the way this all works is we decide that we want to live a life of holiness because none of this is magic. These have to be decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't just 
run around with a bucket of water and just start splashing people talking about you baptized and you holy now. <laughs> so, you know, these are decisions that we make. We make the decision to actually become holy, to mm -hmm. become purified. Mm -hmm. And so then we go through the baptism process. Don't be fooled thinking that you actually don't have to get in the water. You still have to get into the water. That's why our Messiah actually was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. He had never committed a sin in his life. He had never done a transgression in his life. But yet he went through the water as an example to us that we have to yet do that. Mm -hmm. Don't be let people confuse you thinking that you can just do it spiritually. No, he did it just to prove to us that we too have to do it. Mm -hmm. We have to get into that water to be purified, to be cleansed again. And then once we do that, and we have that clean slate being humans we still make errors we have passover in order to cleanse or rewash our slate again right and once we do those things never trying our best not to break i shouldn't say never trying our best not to break the commandments and the rules and the laws again then our temples are ready for our father for the comforter for elijah to actually come be with us Right. So Passover is sort of like a gift that the Father gives us in order to cleanse ourselves up. Well, that's how the Messiah died for our sins. Mm -hmm. You know, we did. Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time, how the Messiah died for our sins. Now, there's some that want you to believe that they murdered him on the cross. And then, you know, that's how we don't have to worry about sin anymore. Because he who was the law made flesh was killed mm -hmm. and dead. And so the law is dead. Well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not how he died for our sins. The way he died for our sins was he turned his blood into the purification the same way they had to use lambs in the Old Testament. Mm. Well, he is the lamb now mm -hmm. and his blood is what purifies us. But instead of having to sacrifice that lamb every year, because, you know, he really only died once on the cross for us. He actually changed his blood into wine now. Mm -hmm. And so that wine that we do at Passover is a representation of his blood. That's how we put his blood on our heart or on the doorpost is by drinking that wine during Passover. Mm, mm. That's how he died for us. That's how he died for our sins. But let's come over to chapter 63 of the third Testament of the Bible. So we can see what this will actually look like, how, what it will feel like, what it will be like, Dwelling in this third era where our body is the spiritual temple. Let's see the signs there in verse 470. Sensitivity, presentiment, revelation, prophecy, inspiration, spiritual vision, healing, gift of speech. All of that and other additional gifts will pour out from the spirit. And through them, men will confirm that a new era has been unfolded before humanity. So this is how we'll know. Mm, okay. This mm -hmm. is how you mm -hmm. know now mm -hmm. if Elijah is dwelling with you because you have all of this or some of this or most of this going on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. maybe we should look up the definitions of these words. Mm -hmm. I'll just look at the synonym for them. But sensitivity, it says the synonyms are compassion, sympathy, understanding, kindliness, warmth. So that's talking to me. Sounds like brotherly love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love for one another. Mm -hmm. And I guess the opposite is true, too. When you see somebody that's not having compassion on their brother. Right. They may not have the indwelling of the Elijah spirit. Right. Their temple may be dirty or mm -hmm. messed up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's one of the things we learn in the instructions is to have love for our brother, to take care when we see our brother harm or in trouble. We have to help them. Right. What jumps into my mind is that recent snowstorm that we had up there in New York, New York and other places where some of those people were out there in trouble, you know, and you see in the news several instances where people invited strangers into their homes or strangers into their shop to actually get them out of the cold. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that is talking about. Yeah, that's the compassion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, saving these people's lives out there. The next is presentiment. 
And from my understanding of the third testament, that's talking about intuition. Absolutely. It says here, feeling, intuition, foreboding, fear, or sense. So I guess the best word there is intuition. Mm -hmm. Just knowing stuff. Right. Right. Is that the way you gather intuition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you have an understanding of something that you haven't been trained on before. For knowledge. For knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's revelation. It says here expose expose exposure disclosure or leak so i guess that one is disclosure right to me it sounds like understanding yeah. of the scripture yeah mm. where we're able to read scripture and actually interpret it wisely right mm -hmm. understanding what is truly saying there in the verses then we have prophecy with the synonyms prediction forecast divination foretelling and insight right this would be foreknowledge yeah. where we actually understand what's coming. Mm -hmm. Again, being able to read and discern the scripture correctly. Right. The scripture tells us everything that's coming. It just takes the Holy Spirit or that comforting spirit to put all of that together for us sometime. Because, you know, you have bits and pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. But praise our Father in heaven. We have the comforting spirit that comes in and puts two and two together so that we can understand what's actually coming up on us, right. helping us to get prepared. The next one is inspiration, which the synonyms are stimulus, spur, motivation, stimulation, and encouragement. And I think of that in terms of being inspired, knowing stuff, uh, sort of like um, the father putting something in your mind to do and you are inspired to do it. You have the motivation to do it. Yeah, something that you didn't think of on your own. Mm -hmm. It kind of seems like you did, but he's actually telling you something to do. Mm -hmm. Like maybe to uh, make a purchase or to change positions in your job or just mm -hmm. something like that that you are inspired to do without really any understanding. And then you look back on it and you say, you know, that was my father that had me to make that decision that was a very wise decision i didn't know why but that was my father that was having me to make that decision that you was know, actually inspiration yeah you know me and my grandmother was talking about this yesterday about the inspiration of the holy spirit how um my grandma has been sick with the COVID for four times that we know of yeah and she was saying that you know she was just tired of being sick and she said that she was just sitting there the other day just looking outside and she said something came into her head and said, go out there, get some pine and make you a tea. Mm -hmm. And she said she did it. And she feels great now. Yeah. yeah. Intuition. And so that's that inspiration. That's that intuition. Yeah. Absolutely. Next is spiritual vision. For vision, we have dreams, mm -hmm. ideas, image, visualization or revelation. You know, a lot of people are talking about they're just having dreams all of a sudden. People who haven't dreamed before are now dreaming. Well, we understand that that's one of the ways that he communicates with mm -hmm. us. Those There are three ways that he communicates. Talking about our father, there's three ways that he communicates with us. What are they? They are intuition, mm -hmm. dreaming, mm -hmm. and our consciousness. And our consciousness. Those are the three ways. So when we start having more and more dreams... We can start understanding that this Elijah spirit is, a, is with us. Mm -hmm. The comforting spirit is with us. Then there's healing. With the synonyms curative, remedial, therapeutic, medicinal, or curing. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, just brings to mind with me, you know, going back to the story with my grandmother, talking about the herbs, having a more understanding of them, as well as, you know, oils, laying your hands on people and just praying for them. Yeah, and having the ability to, to heal people. Mm -hmm. This is one of the gifts in the scripture, we even read it in the New Testament, how that's one of the ways that we know that we believe is that we can heal people. Mm -hmm. And we are even instructed in the same verses to actually go and to actually lay our hands on people to heal them. Right. So once we see this ability to heal people, then we know again, this is one of the ways we know that our temples has now been prepared for the Elijah spirit. And then the last one listed here says that there are a lot more. It says that there are other additional gifts um, that are not mentioned here. But the last one that's mentioned here is speech. Right. 
which the synonyms are language, talking, dialogue, Tongue. and tongues, right. which is where I believe I have to give a lot of credit for even these videos. Yeah. You know, scriptures talks, tells us how can they hear without a preacher? And that's just merely means um, someone who says it, someone who talks. Right. And not necessarily talking about a, you know, a individual preacher, preacher that we think of, but it's just someone who speaks to them. And yeah, I would definitely say you have a gift of speech that the father has given you. And it really comes out in the videos mm -hmm. because normally I'm not a good talker. Or normally you're kind of quiet. Normally I'm kind of quiet. I don't talk much. And even when I do, I don't know what the right thing to say <laughs> half the time. <laughs> but somehow yeah, you, can't, these, you can't hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> but, well, <laughs> these videos come out and, you know, people hitting the like button and leaving comments. So I'm saying something right. Well, we give all of the credit to our father for that gift of speech. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, he says there's many more gifts that we be poured out in this time so that we can confirm that this new era has started. Right. We are in the era where the Elijah spirit is dwelling with us. Mm -hmm. But let's read some more of this. 471. Today you doubt the existence of those gifts because there are some who hide them from the world fearing their judgment. Tomorrow it shall be the most natural and beautiful thing to possess them. Yeah, this is talking about after the world is humbled. Mm -hmm. Right now you have people, some having these gifts that are hiding these gifts from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Like it says there, because they don't want to be judged. Right. Especially you think about healing, mm -hmm. uh, dreams, people are keeping their dreams quiet, mm -hmm. uh, intuition, you right. know, they don't want to, you know, talk about their inspiration and stuff, you know, because they don't want to be judged. But once the whole world realized that we're in this new era, then, you know, everybody's going to have this going on and they're going to be kind of proud of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be um, something that's hidden like it is now. When you realize that we're in this era and the reason why we have all of this going on is because it was part of our father's plan the whole time. Right. But let's read that last verse there in this lesson. I come to you during this third era because you are ill in body and spirit. The healthy one has no need of the doctor, nor do the just require purification. Yeah, talking about now, us being these people who are here alive now, slated to live through these apocalypse, we are the most unhealthy out of all of the beings. I, I believe that's why we're actually chosen to be in this time is because we, the ones that are alive now, are in need of the most purification. Mm -hmm. While there's a lot of people in the spirit world that will actually miss the apocalypse and they will return back as our children, happy and cheerful, you know, wondering what all we went through as they get to live in these glorified bodies, not having to worry about illnesses or diseases and all of that stuff that we have to deal with. All right, coming out of chapter 54 of the Third Testament of the Bible, which is about the struggles between the doctrines, religions, and the churches. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look down here at verse 41. Okay. The spiritual valley shall come yet closer to men, to give them testimony of its existence and its presence. On all roads, there shall be signs, evidence, revelations, and messages that instantly proclaim that a new era has begun. And we've talked about a lot of these, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the Old Testament says the young men will dream dreams and the old men would have visions mm -hmm. or vice versa or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. These are the signs mm -hmm. that's letting us know that we're in this new era. But look what it says here. There shall be struggle and there shall be upheaval in the peoples. For the religions shall sow fear in those who believe those messages. And science shall deny the truth of those happenings. So that takes us back to what we were reading about earlier. Mm -hmm. The religions, the same people are, that are telling us to disobey the commandments and right. telling us to break the laws. They are going to be the ones who are actually going to sow fear in those who are experiencing these things going on. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you go and tell them about their dreams, 
or you go and tell them about your intuition or go and tell them about the healing, they're going to try to tell you that it's coming from a different source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember, you know, talking to the same grandmother. You know, my grandmother is a pastor at um, the local church um, about the herbs. And she would often tell me, you better leave them things alone. You don't know that. That's hoodoo and, you know, witches and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but now... Now she's getting inspiration from her father and she out there looking for herbs yeah, on the ground. Did she put some mullein in the tea yeah, with she it? She added mullein, um, uh, pine bark, and um, I sent her some rabbit tobacco that she said that she wanted some. And so I sent it and now she's asking for it. It's yeah, kinda... didn't, didn't she say something about that's remedies that she was taking when she was a kid? Yeah, she said that this is the stuff that she took when she was a child and she don't remember ever going to the doctor she said the first time she ever remember going to the doctor was when she had um her last child i believe that was my mom so um so maybe she's been indwelled with the elijah spirit now uh, i think you know COVID can't do that for you <laughs> yeah, we learn that we learn it does or uh, being sick you know can make you um think things otherwise yeah we read here in the third testament that pain actually brings us closer to him mm -hmm. but let's read on then the humble shall rise up sheathing themselves in valor to testify to the truth of the evidence that they have received those who having been deprived of hope by science shall recover their health spiritually and testify to the miraculous cases that reveal a power that is infinite and of absolute wisdom. So here is this healing. Mm -hmm. And then you have these humble, these people who were ashamed of these gifts before. Right. Will now rise up in valor mm -hmm. to, like it says, showing evidence that we are now in this new time. Right. But go on. Among the humble and ignored, there shall arise men and women whose words full of light shall surprise the theologians, philosophers, and scientists. And when the struggle is at its height and the poor are humiliated and their testimonies denied by the arrogant, that shall be the moment when Elijah calls the wise, the lords, and the princes and put them to the test. So these humble people, these people who are now recognizing this Elijah spirit are going to rise up full of light will surprise those theologians, those religious leaders who think they know everything now mm -hmm. are going to be surprised. The philosophers and even the scientists talking about the doctors and stuff when they have this ability to actually heal people. Mm -hmm. This is all pointing back to what we read in Daniel chapter 12 when it's talking about how Michael will stand up. Mm -hmm. Woe to the false and hypocrites in that hour for perfect justice shall descend to them. Yeah, so they have the upper hand now, but we learn in the New Testament that the tables will turn one day. Mm -hmm. And so these people who are humbled now and are the tail now will become the head. Right. It shall be the hour of justice, but from it many spirits will ascend to the true life. In many hearts, faith will arise and many eyes will be opened to the light. This is the time that is talking about when the whole world realizes where we're at. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, there are some, most even, that's actually going to have to wait for the apocalypse to actually realize that all of this is going on. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in denial of all of this. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what this is actually prophesying about. And tell them what's actually going to happen to those guys that, like we said, seem to have the upper hand now. Right. All right, let's go over to chapter 38 and let's look down in verse 30. This teaching is the road to eternal life. All who discover elevation and perfection in this doctrine will know how to reconcile it to that which I confided to you when I was on the earth, for its essence is the same. Talking about this third testament of the Bible here, mm -hmm. because like we said, it's part of the preparation process. All right, look at verse 31. He who does not know how to find the truth contained in my lessons may even affirm that this doctrine does not lead to the same end as the teachings of the Messiah. Spirits blinded by misinterpretations or confused by religious fanaticism 
may not quickly understand the truth of these revelations, but must travel a road of trials to quit themselves of the materialism that prevents them from understanding and complying with my precepts that teaches you to love one another. So, again, you hear about these trials that these guys are going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. Like we said, there are some, maybe even a lot of the people watching this video, who have the indwelling of the Elijah spirit, the covenant spirit are with them. They are recognizing and even taking advantage of all of these gifts that are being bestowed upon them, while the rest of the world are in complete rejection of all of this. Well, there's coming a day when everybody's going to know it. The only thing is, is that it's going to come through these trials that it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. But notice here how he's saying that the people who are rejecting the Third Testament, mm -hmm. rejecting these lessons, which we read earlier, are necessary for the Elijah spirit to come dwell with us. There are those who actually are rejecting the Third Testament. It tells us why. It says because they are blinded by misinterpretations and confused by religious fanaticism. Mm -hmm. In other words, like we were talking about earlier, how they have chosen man's words, misinterpretations, and are choosing those errors, choosing those false doctrines and those lies over biblical truth. Mm -hmm. In other words, they've gone down to the local church and the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug has lied to them for many, many years filling in the blanks on stuff that he didn't really understand. Like for instance, the seven seals or the whole rapture scenario or, or obedience to the law or different mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that he didn't understand. And he told them mistruths and mm -hmm. misunderstandings, misinterpretations it says here. And now while they're confronted with the truth, reading it in the third Testament, they are discounting and throwing away the third Testament saying, that it's not true. Mm -hmm. It's a new age thing. Because it doesn't agree with what they've learned. It doesn't agree with the errors that they've been taught. Right. Mm -hmm. The Third Testament is in total opposition of some of the teachings that we learned previously from uh, church or from other um, you know, books or whatever other religious doctrines. Uh, because it's telling us that, yes, you do have to obey the laws. And all it takes is for an important minister, mm -hmm. a powerful minister mm -hmm. to give a sermon that everybody likes. And then all of a sudden, every other minister will start repeating that. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, when it comes to the truth and the truth is made clear in the third testament of the Bible, people will throw away the third testament of the Bible and say that it don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the rapture. You know, I used to believe that we were all going to be supernaturally removed from the planet. I can even go back and pull out videos from 2016 and 2015 where I even talked about that. But once I started reading the Third Testament in 2018, it was made clear that that was a misunderstanding. So I had the choice to make then. I could be like those other ministers out there and just put down the Third Testament, never talk about the Third Testament, never bring it up. There's many smart sounding ministers out there that will never talk about the third testament of the Bible because it, it disagreed with what they're saying. And I had that choice to make, too. Mm -hmm. Was I going to change my understanding, change what I believe, get rid of what I've been taught, wipe that out of my mind and go with the truth? Or was I going to try to suppress the third testament? Just so I can keep telling the lies, just so I can keep believing what I'm believing. And I don't I, I'm I'm tempted to call out those guys names, you know, those channels that are doing this. You know, some of you guys watch those channels over there, mm -hmm. but notice that they don't never talk about the third testament of the Bible. Right. It's because it disagrees with their doctrine. They would rather choose their own doctrine, their own misunderstandings, their own religious fanaticism mm -hmm. instead of realizing the truth. And, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, they're actually hindering you by doing so. You know, they they not teaching it on their channel. You know, some of those guys have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and they're actually keeping them from this knowledge, keeping them from being aware of this knowledge, not telling them the truth. And so, you know, it's like those guys that are telling you to break the law. 
They are making sure that your temple is too dirty so that you won't be able to go into the kingdom. They're actually holding you back from going into the kingdom of heaven. They're actually in your way. That's sort of like that uh, parable or um, thing that you always say about the dogs and the cows. They are standing like a dog in the, the crib with the cattle. In the crib, there's hay and there's corn in there for the cow. But the dog is sleeping in there. You know, and so he don't want no hay or no corn. But every time the cattle try to eat it, he barks at them and won't let them eat it. Mm -hmm. So that's what these guys are doing. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go into the kingdom of heaven and they don't want you to go in either. Because they want to be raptured. What it boils down to is the same way they're telling you to disobey the law. They actually do not want our father's rule over their life. They don't want mm -hmm. our father, even the one who created them mm -hmm. telling them what to do mm -hmm. they want to be disobedient and do what they want to do and so now they're going to reject all of the truth and they will rather actually die and go into the spirit world than actually let our father have control over them and tell them what to do that's what it boils down to yeah yeah that's but, absolutely what it boils down to but you have to make the decision you have to make the decision if you're going to prepare yourself for the Elijah spirit or else you're going to have to or, or live, a lie. live a lie and take the word of man and be prepared to get removed or go through these trials mm -hmm. that's coming up on the world. What you're going to be convinced one way or the other. You can do it on your own. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. You know, understanding these principles now is the easy way, you know, because the, the apocalypse is coming to convince the rest of the world of what the third testament is saying so was it hard for you was it hard for you to um make that switch make that change absolutely not mm -hmm. because i grew up in the bible i didn't really grow up in the church right you know before i started going to churches i had already read the bible and so i knew what the bible was saying i knew the power of the scripture i knew how truthful the scripture is i had discernment you know mm -hmm. of what was real and what was so when i saw it written I was able to pick up on this is true and that what I had learned from the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug was a lie, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to remember that's what the choice is, believing the scripture or believing man, because the Bible never told us, it never gave us any details on a lot of these things. Like we was talking about the seven seals, the Bible never gave us a whole lot of details. So all we had to go by was man's words and what man was saying mm -hmm. and so when you see it actually written down in the scripture it's easy to go along with the scripture and discount what man said the problem is is that a lot of people haven't read the scripture nor do they plan on reading it and so they don't know what's true and what's not yeah it's definitely uh convenient and more easy to um listen to what man has to say it was for me until you know you made the choice for me that you mm. need to read the bible for yourself yeah and so once i did it absolutely started making sense too it's sort of like you know you have uh canning you know you have uh you can press your can or else you can go to the store and get a can of tomatoes for 59 cents mm -hmm. so which one are you going to choose you're going to mm -hmm. choose the real food or you're going to choose food that's been processed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've compared that to reading the Bible or taking, you know, Joyce Meyer's word for it or yeah. Kenneth Copeland or T.D. Jakes or whoever, you know, mm -hmm. you have to read it yourself. If you plan on getting the real, organic, natural, non-GMO food. Yeah. If you want the truth, you're going to have to get it from the scripture. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be willing to discredit everything that you've heard. Every everything that we have heard from the church has to be reevaluated. Mm -hmm. Everything. That's one thing I've learned in these last seven years is that no matter what we've heard, no matter how many times we've heard it down at that church, we have to compare it with what the scripture says. And chances statistically speaking, it's going to be wrong. The Bible is going to say something totally different because, like I said there a few minutes ago, these guys, these religious leaders are actually trying to lead us astray. They're actually taking us down the wrong road, keeping our temples unclean, making it so that we don't. And why are they doing that? Why, why, why would you say they're doing that? Well, they 
scripture says is because they're the, the, they are the children of the darkness mm -hmm. and they have the goal of actually leading people into darkness he sent his people here the, our father has sent his people here the children of the light that's here to teach us the word but you also have the spirits of the people from the darkness that are actually leading people astray and they're doing so for materialism right they're doing so for that's the main thing it's, uh uh pride pride against what it where it, it it puts them above those people yeah mm -hmm. they're actually able to keep them oppressed by mm -hmm. not letting them know about the third testament by keeping them sinning by not you know mm -hmm. teaching them about you know how the messiah died for us actually keeps their people oppressed and dependent on them mm -hmm. and you know like and so pride and materialism that's the reason why they're doing it if they ever allow their people to go and read and understand the Bible for themselves, they're going to lose them. Mm -hmm. they, the people are going to go away. They're not going to have to depend on them for prayer or, you know, for spiritual guidance or whatever. They can mm -hmm. actually get all of the, everything they need from the scripture. Mm -hmm. And they know that. Mm -hmm. And so they try to keep them out of it and try to keep them oppressed. And that's what they're doing. It's sad, but that's what they're doing. But, you know, their day is coming. Right. Whoa, did we go off on a tangent or somebody needs to hear that? Yeah, well, I think everybody needs to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody needs, like I said, everything we've learned needs to be reevaluated. Right. Everything, everything you think you've learned about the scripture. When somebody tell you anything in the Bible, you need to say, where's the verse? Show me a verse. I don't care what it is, whether you, whether you believe it or not. Please show me a verse where this comes from. Mm -hmm. Because if they can't produce a verse... The, where it's coming from is, is probably going to be a misinterpretation. It's mm -hmm. probably going to be wrong. It's probably going to be religious fanaticism. And it's probably going to be all geared towards the leading you into darkness so that when this apocalypse come down on you, you're going to actually find yourself in the trial with them. That's basically what it boils down to. You know, Satan got to get his share. And, you know, he has his agents out here that's actually trying to set us up, trying to make us live lives that's going to cause us to be punished so with that we're going to close this video out if you got anything out of it hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and with that we will say shalom